Hi. Thanks, everyone, for coming to my talk. So the fun fact about Barcelona and my talk today, I wrote the quote for this talk when I was on the plane to Barcelona back in March. It was just an idea I had, and I thought, OK, there's no Wi-Fi on the plane, so let me experiment with something. So I wrote the first version of the code when I was on the plane. I forgot to check it onto GitHub after I landed in Barcelona, and uh, everything went haywire after that. OK, let's talk about the details of, in the lunch break. So how many of you guys here do uh, so just a brief intro about myself. Uh, I'm a member of Apache Foundation, and I committed, I'm a committed on a few projects. And uh, I've been with the Mahout project since uh, Berlin Buzzwords started back in 2009. So the Mahout founders were the founders of Berlin Buzzwords back in the day. Uh, so before we start, how many of you guys here do deep learning as part of your daily jobs using TensorFlow? OK. So how many of you have heard of Ludwig from Uber AI Labs, which they open source back in Feb this year? OK, just one. So today's agenda is going to be like, we'll have a brief introduction. What is Ludwig and what is the philosophy behind Ludwig? And uh, how do you plug in Ludwig into beam pipelines? And I have a few sample demos. So what is Ludwig? It's a TensorFlow-based toolkit from Uber AI Labs. And uh, they had open sourced it very recently, I think in Feb this year, February this year, which is Apache 2 licensed. And uh, definitely they're open to contributions from the community. And it's being used within Uber, uh, different parts of Uber, like Uber Eats and uh, Uber, uh, Uber payments and a few other Uber divisions uh, for uh, machine learning use cases. So uh, what is the philosophy behind Uber? So it's kind of like, you know, when you are trying to make a building, you know, you have the building blocks and uh, you, you, have, you, have the, you need the bricks to build a building, right? So most of the deep learning libraries today, like uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch, they provide you the building blocks for your building. So, but what Ludwig does is it provides you the buildings and you can build a city out of it, city out of the buildings. And you can also build new buildings if you want. So what does that mean? So, pardon my German here. Uh, so the philosophy of uh, Ludwig is, number one, you don't need any programming experience. So that's what that means in German, programming experience needed. And uh, so much so, my sixth grader cheats on his English homework using a text classification model he built with Ludwig. OK, so basically you don't need any zero, you don't need any coding experience and you don't need to know deep learning at all to work with Ludwig. So the next, uh, pardon my German again, it's general, generality, OK? So basically what they have is they have a uh, concept of data types, data type based approach to deep learning model design. And you can use the same deep learning model across several different use cases. And we'll be looking at examples of that. And it's flexible. So it's easy to learn for someone who is very new to deep learning, like a sixth grader. And uh, for the more experienced and the seasoned ones, you have a lot of uh, flexibility to extend the model, what they currently have. You can build your own new buildings and build your city out of it. And, uh, <clears throat> and you can also add new architectural models. So, uh, so in case they have, let's say, if you want to add, uh, the new network is capsule networks from Google. So they don't have capsule networks right now in Ludwig. So if you want to add something like capsule networks, you can easily add that to the Ludwig framework using just the constructs they have. And uh, the last part of it is most deep learning models seem to be like black boxes. So the English translation of that is understandability. And uh, so most deep learning models today are black boxes. And uh, there's Ludwig provides you the visualization tools like TensorBoard, and it integrates with TensorBoard. And you can also measure the performance of a model while it's training, and you can measure the predictions. OK, so how does it all work? So the one big limitation we have with Ludwig today is it only takes CSV format, uh, CSV input format. There is, a, there is a call in the community to support TensorFlow record, uh, record formats and several other formats other than CSV. And uh, all that you need to do to train a model is you provide your training data in a CSV file. And uh, there's something called a model definition file that you need to set up, and you provide that as a YAML. And we'll be looking at an example of that. And uh, you can run this either from a command line. They have a command line interface, or they have programmatic APIs for training the models. And you can plug in the programmatic APIs into a beam transform or do fun function 
and put it in a Beam pipeline. So here's a sample YAML file. And uh, all that you need to do is specify the input features. So what are the input features that you're looking at? And what is the output feature? And what is the cat type of the output feature? So it's based on data types. So the data type like text or a category or a binary or any of that. So let's take a break from the slides and do a quick demo. So let's do an airline sentiment analysis. I have the Zubito notebook, and I have some of the Ludwig APIs. So the way you install Ludwig is pip install Ludwig. So that's simple. And uh, I'm using pandas data frames here. So let me run this. And uh, so this is my simple model definition file. I'm only interested in a simple feature, just for the sake of the demo. So I'm only taking the input text. And uh, my output is I want to see the sentiment, whether it's a negative sentiment or a positive or neutral, and what is the probability scores. So the way you train, uh, you take the model definition file, you define your model definition file, and you pass that to the Ludwig model. You specify that to the Ludwig model. So let me run this. And then let's look at our training data. It's in a pandas data frame. So I have a tweet. So this is tweets of airline sentiments. So I have the tweet ID and I have the sentiment whether it's neutral or negative or positive, and uh, the sentiment confidence, and also they have a reason why did this guy tweet that way. Okay, so once you have that, you can train your model on the training data. I'm not going to run this right now because it's going to take for a little time and it's going to burn up my laptop. I'll skip this step, number four. Let's go to number five. Yeah. And you can see the training statistics. So the loss is 0.4, and the accuracy is 0.85. And uh, the combined loss and the combined accuracy, the validation, you know, how, how, did you, how much was the training data split into training, validation, and test sets? So it provides you a lot of stuff, OK? <clears throat> so once you do that, you can, run your you can run the inference. Next step is to run the inference. So I have a test set that I have ready. And then to run the predictions, you have your model, and then you say model.predict, model.predict, and pass in the test set. It takes the trained model. Oh, sorry, uh, I think my model got messed up. OK. So basically, it takes the trained model, and then it does predictions on that. OK. So, so this is the intent here is to show you the uh, Ludwig APIs. So you can predict this is the programming API. Uh, So you have, uh, for predictions, you say model.predict. And uh, for training, you say model.train. And uh, all that you have to do is import from Ludwig.api, import Ludwig model, and uh, build the model from a model definition. And the model definition is a YAML file. And uh, you can go much, uh, much more complicated, sophisticated than what I have, very simple one here. You can add more features, and you can have more output features. You can also define your loss functions, which loss function you want. If you don't specify any of that, it takes the default. Whether you want to train it using a convolutional network or a recurrent, recurrent neural network, you can specify all of that. And you don't have to build the network. It does the network for you. All that you have to say is, what is my hidden state size, and uh, what is my output layer size? OK, switching back to my slide deck. So the, as, we, I, as we just saw, Ludwig has something called data type specific encoders and decoders. So when I pass in my CSV file with the training data, it figures out whether it's a text. You specify whether it's a text or if it's an image or um, if it's a combination of text and image. So based on that, it takes the input and it encodes the input into tensors for different data types. So text gets encoded, and uh, images would get encoded. And then it uh, does a combine. It is a combine operation, like it concatenates all the inputs and then runs a training algorithm on that, and then takes the output, converts the tensors back into outputs. So this is an example I borrowed from the Ludwig website. So just to, you can see that you have the different features, so the different data types, text, category, numerical, binary, set, sequence. And then you have a specific encoder, unique encoder for each of them. And uh, since the architecture is flexible, you can add your own custom encoders to the pipeline. And then you have in between a combiner. The combiner takes all the different encoders, combines that into a format to feed into a training algorithm. And then the output of the training algorithm goes into the specific decoders. And then you again get back your text features. So this kind of a flexible encoder decoder architecture allows you to train different algorithms and more sophisticated models. 
And guess what? You never had to write a single line of code so far for any of this. All that you have to def do is define your YAML file and what, what this, what's the architecture you want in your YAML file. So, uh, so this, great, you have your training model and you have trained your model. Now what do you do with that? How do you put that into a beaming, beam pipeline? So let's come to beaming Ludwig models and how do you do that? So I train the model offline and uh, if anybody has ideas of training deep learning models in a streaming fashion, please let me know. I know that you can do it with iterative streams with in Flink, I tried that, but uh, I've never seen good results with that. Um, so, so far I've been only training my models offline or maybe stateful stream processing may help. Depends on how big the model and how many parameters you have in the model. So once you have trained your model offline, you can take your model and put it in an inference pipeline in streaming fashion. So folks who are from Germany or from Berlin, uh, I'm sure you know who those people are on the left. Uh, any guesses? Thomas? Oh. Voila. OK. So that's Sophie Passman, and that's Marina Westband, and that's, of course, the Nazi party, AFD. So I'll be doing a live demo. We'll be ingesting the uh, tweets from uh, all these guys in a pipeline. And in, it, it, the tweets are all in German, by the way. And I have trained a machine translation model, which I've deployed in a remote RPC server. And from Beam, I'll be calling the RPC server to translate each of the tweets into English and displaying the output. OK. Ready, let's see. Okay, so I'm starting my beam pipeline. Now let's wait for the tweets from these folks to come through. And uh, yeah, I've been researching German, German tweets for the last one year. And uh, a fun fact, most of the tweets are either profane or racist or Nazi-ish. And uh, the tweets stop after 4 p.m. during summers. That's when they go to beer gardens. Okay, so the first line is the German tweet. Okay, and the second line is the translation to English. Oh, it's too small. Should I make it? Okay, uh, I kind of, this is my own machine translation model. I compared it with uh, Google's Translate. It's almost there with Google. Uh, a different fun fact. So since most of the tweets in German are profane, you kind of see the German word freaking very often, which I'm sure folks know what that means. And that gets translated into English as F-U-Q-Q, -Q, which is the same as Google Translate. Uh, yep, so some more tweets coming through. Okay, so this is all running in a beam pipeline. And I trained my model offline using Ludwig, and I deployed the model in a RPC server just to expose it as a service. And I'm calling the service from a beam pipeline. Okay, and ingesting the tweets live. Okay, so I'll stop this. So I think you saw enough, or do you want to see more profanity flow through? Okay, there you go. Okay, so switch back. Okay, so, so most of the profanity is not from the two ladies on the bottom, it's from the one on the top, okay? So, so this is how the code looks in a beam inference pipeline. So I'm reading the data from a tweet stream and uh, calling my translate, uh, calling my translate function, which is actually calling a model that's been deployed remotely. So what are the limitations? So the li one big limitation is Ludwig presently only supports CSV. So it would be really great if you could add TF record input format. That way you can directly plug it into a TFX pipeline, right? And uh, obviously most deep learning models have to be trained in a batch offline. Future work is to add support for TFX records and explore integration of Ludwig and TFX, as I just said. And uh, here are some links. Questions? Okay. 
Thank you so much, Sunil. We'll open up the floor for questions. Okay, we have one there. Out of curiosity, on what base did you choose the personalities on Twitter for the inference pipeline? What's that? On what, uh, why did you choose the personalities on Twitter for the inference pipeline, or why, why those people? Why did I choose Twitter? Now, which, oh. there, is this Sophie Passmann at the bottom? Uh, well, I'm a fan of Sophie Passmann. Okay, this yeah. is the reason, okay, I was just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, one second. Yeah, I'm also a fan of the one above that, uh, oh, Marina. Marina. So. so I was just wondering, when you're uh, training your model, yeah. uh, what do you use to do like the pre-processing feature extraction stuff? So it's all CSV right now. So there's not much pre-processing. The only pre-processing is to provide your training file in a commas-operated format. So yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, so that's one of the limitations, right? Thank you. Are there any other questions, even upstairs? Anyone? Oh, a few here. Thomas. All right. So did you, in, in the example you had, you didn't seem to pick a model architecture. Was that just, was some model architecture inferred? Or is there a default? Or did you, in this translation example, did you specify an architecture? The architecture for uh, machine translation, it's the standard Google architecture, the, uh, the attention network, B B Badanu. Right, that's the one thing. That's the default. Okay? Yeah, I've seen uh, very good results with that, and we have it running in production in a few places. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, is it possible to extract the underlying model from this Ludwig framework to TensorFlow? Or it is, is it TensorFlow. It's all TensorFlow under the hood. But so can the you use it as a TensorFlow model and put it in TensorFlow uh, trans, um, extended, or you have to use the Ludwig framework for prediction? It is TensorFlow. It's not TensorFlow extended. It's pure TensorFlow under the hood. The only thing Ludwig does is you don't have to know TensorFlow API at all. Okay? You just have to create a YAML file with uh, your input features, your output features, how much training time do you want, how many epochs you want to train on, and what is the loss function. And uh, otherwise, it takes all the defaults. Depending on your data, if it is text, it has like a, the default is RNN. Or uh, if it's images, CNN, and if it's machine translation, the attention network. But yes, you can definitely you know specify a different architecture if you want, and uh, you don't. It's all in the YAML again. How many input layers and how many hidden layers, and what is the size of the hidden layers? Whether it's a bidirectional LSTM or a single LSTM. Yeah. So there's zero programming involved. So sixth grader can train deep learning networks. That's the idea. All right, thank you. Any other questions? No? One, two? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Sunil.